again to the Ministry of Full Gospel Evangelism. My name is David McKivitt. The Ministry of Full Gospel Evangelism believes that the Bible is the inspired, inherent, infallible Word of God. In simple language, we believe that the whole of the Bible is true. And we believe that the God of the Bible does not change. In Malachi 3.6 we read, I am the Lord, I change not. So therefore we believe that God is just as holy today as he's always been. He's just as righteous today as he's always been. And he's just as merciful today as he's always been. We believe that the God who worked miracles in the Bible days is still working miracles today. We believe that the same Jesus that gave sight to blind Bartimaeus, that same Jesus that healed the woman with the issue of blood, is still working miracles today. And today can be your day for healing. It can be your day for a miracle. It can be your day for salvation. If you have a prayer request, we would like to pray for you. All you've got to do is telephone us on that number that is on your screen now or email us. The email address is on your screen and somebody is waiting to pray for you. If you don't want to speak to us, you can text us. We will pray for you. My wife and I pray daily over every prayer request that we get because you are important to us. I would like you, if you have a Bible, to turn your Bibles to Proverbs 8 verse 13. That's Proverbs 8 verse 13. It says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil and the forward mouth do I hate. This is part two of the subject dealing with the pride issue. Dealing with the pride issue. Last time we just introduced the subject. But today we're going to talk on the subject, what does God think of pride? What does God think of pride? Because if you and I are a Christian, if you and I are a believer, we should be concerned about what God thinks about everything that we do. The way that we dress, the way that we act, the way that we talk, the way that we conduct ourselves, our attitude, our disposition. We should be concerned because we want to do everything in a way that is pleasing to God. So what does God think of pride? Of course, the prideful person does not really consider what God thinks. He or she is normally self-motivated, self-centred. They live a me, my and I life. Everything is me, 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 me. A prideful person does not honour God. Neither does he or she seek to. They only use God and the Bible as an instrument to build up their notoriety or to make money. In other words, they preach about God, but they're not interested in God. They are interested in themselves. It's what do people think of me? 
How do I sound when I'm preaching? They're not interested on how many people are left praising God when they're finished preaching or when they're finished singing or when they're finished whatever their role is in the church. They're more concerned about the praise of man because it is all about them. There are people that just use the Bible because they like to stand before people, they like to be seen, they like the applause that comes from men, they like the notoriety, but they are not interested in God. A prideful preacher will be more interested in what they think of him or her rather than what God thinks about them. A prideful singer is only interested in the applause that they receive when they're finished singing. They care nothing about whether God is on it, just as long as they are. However, we need to see as Christians, what does God think of pride? What does God think of pride? Well, the first thing we notice when we read the Bible is God hates pride. He hates it. Proverbs 6, verse 16 says, Six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. And the number one on that list, top of the list, is a proud look. I won't go into the others, but it's interesting that out of the six things that God hates, he puts pride at the top of that list. God associates pride as coming from a reprobate mind. Let me read what the Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Romans. And I'm reading Romans 1 verses 28 to 30. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the things which were not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, magni, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boastful, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. And out of one of the things that he mentions as coming from a reprobate mind is the thing that we are talking about today. It is pride. What do we mean by reprobate? Well, the Webster defined reprobate as to condemn strongly, as unworthy, unacceptable or evil. To fordain to damnation. Whenever we get prideful, we are manifesting something that God hates and is unacceptable to him. Going by the Webster Dictionary, we learn that a reprobate is evil. It is unacceptable. Therefore, because pride is mentioned as a consequence of a reprobate mind, we have to come to the conclusion that pride is unacceptable. That pride is evil. That pride is unworthy. God hates it. Proverbs 16 verse 5, everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord, for hand joined in hand he shall not be unpunished. Therefore we learn that pride is an abomination to the Lord. Therefore, if you and I are walking in pride, it shows that our lifestyle, the way that we are acting, the way that we are thinking, is an abomination unto the Lord. Therefore, if there is any pride in us, we need to repent of it. You do, you do, 
and you do. We all need to get rid of pride in our life. Pride led to the fall of Lucifer. Let me read the Isaiah 14 verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which this weaken the nations? Notice pride here. Notice the arrogance of Lucifer. This led to his downfall. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. When you get to a place where I is ruling your life rather than God, then you've got a pride issue. When you're worried about, I wonder if I'm going to be invited. Will I be given the best seat? Will I be given a good present? Will I be asked to sing in the church? Will I be asked to preach? Will the pastor acknowledge me and the work that I do in the church? When you get to a stage where you think, I can do sing better than that person, I can preach better than that person, I and more holier, I should have a better position, then you're on your way down like Lucifer was. Pride also was instrumental in Satan's temptation to Adam and Eve. Let's take a look at Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Now the servant was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field, which God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. But it's the next verse. We see that pride is the test that Satan is using on Adam and Eve. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You shall be as gods. In other words, you don't need God to tell you what to do. You will make your own decision. You will be a god. Doesn't it sound like Lucifer's fall from heaven? I will be like the Most High. I will exalt my throne. Friends, learn to be satisfied in whatever position you are in. And stay humble in that position. And if you stay humble, God will lift you higher. We also see that when Adam and Eve sinned, when they ate the fruit, they were too prideful to acknowledge their sin. You find later when God called them in the Garden of Eden, not one of them was humble enough to confess their sins. They made excuses. Adam blamed God. The woman that you gave me. It's your fault, God, you gave me that woman. I was all right until you gave me that woman. And the woman, she did go, she never acknowledged her sin. She said, it was him, it was Adam. A prideful person will never repent. A prideful person will never truly say sorry and mean it. I know some people say, well, I'm sorry, but they're not really sorry. They just want you to stop talking about it. But a true person will say they're sorry, and that sorry means they repent, they turn away from it. The problem today is the world makes pride a virtue. 
but the Bible calls it sin. But the way pride is spoken of in the world, it makes it look like it's something good. You hear people say, take pride in your appearance. You have your pride to think about. You hear people say, I wouldn't do that. I've got my pride to think about. No, you haven't got your pride to think about. You've got your pride to get rid of. You shouldn't take pride in your appearance, but you should dress in a way that honours God, that is pleasing to God. And all over, we, all over the world we see pride being used as something positive. We hear about, I'm black and proud. Gay pride week. People say, I'm English, or I'm American, or I'm African, and I'm proud of it. I'm proud to be English. I'm proud to be Jamaican. I'm proud to be Nigerian. I'm proud. No, friends, God doesn't want us to be proud. We should love our country. We should pray for our country. But we shouldn't be proud of our country. We should be Honour God and be proud of God who made this world, who created all things. The Bible never speaks of pride as being a virtue. In Leviticus 26 verse 19 it says, I will break the pride of your power. I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. God never, you won't find anywhere in your Bible where it tells you to be proud of your country, to be proud of your colour, to take pride in your appearance. It doesn't tell us that. This is the world's way, but the things of the world are enmity against God. Psalms 36 verse 11. Let not the foot of pride come against me. Let not the hand of the wicked remove me. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate pride. We should hate all kinds of pride. An arrogancy, an evil way, and the forward mouth, God says I hate. Proverbs 11 verse 2, when pride cometh, then come of shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. Proverbs 13 verse 10. Only by pride come of contention, but the well advised is wisdom. Proverbs 14 verse 3. In the mouth of the foolishness is the rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Proverbs 16 verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Look at this. Proverbs 29 verse 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honour shall uphold the humble. Friends, if there's anything that we need to get rid of in our life, it's pride. The more humble we are, the more God is going to hold us. I'll read that verse again. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honour shall uphold the humble in spirit. Let me read Matthew 7 verse 20 to 23. This is Jesus speaking, and he said, that which cometh out of the man defileth a man. For from within, out of the hearts of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murderers, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within. And defile a man. Notice what he says on here. He includes pride. 
For he says, thefts, covetousness, wicked deceit, viciousness, and even I, blasphemy, pride. All these things come from within and defile a man. Pride will defile you. Pride is an abomination. Pride comes from a reprobate mind. God hates pride. 1 John 2 verse 16 we see that pride is not of God, but comes from the world. 1 John 2.16 For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. See, pride does not come from God. You say, I'm a Jamaican, I'm proud of it. Yes, love your country. But pride does not come from God, so don't use that word. Find another word. God hates pride. You shouldn't be proud of anything other than the Lord. And I don't see... I love my country, but I'm not proud of my country. There's a lot of things in my country I don't like, and one day this world is going to be destroyed. That includes my country and your country. It's all going to be destroyed, but like... Abraham of old, I am seeking a city that have a foundation whose builder and maker is God. Now I want you to notice in the verses that we've just read, in Mark chapter 7, verses 20 to 23, look how God mentions pride. God mentions pride in the same context as adultery, as fornication, as murder, as deceit, and as blasphemy. God puts pride in that same category. That is why we need to work at being humble. We need to humble ourselves before God. So in summary, we see what God thinks of pride. He hates it. It's an abomination unto him. He will bring down all that are proud. God puts pride in the same list as murderers, fornicators, and adultery, and blasphemy. Now is the time to stop our foolish boasting. To stop trying to spend all our life trying to impress others, to stop worrying about what man thinks of you and consider what God thinks of you. God gives grace to the humble. He hears the prayers of the humble. Let us today humble ourselves before God. Remember, if you have a prayer request, Call that number on your screen. Text us if you want to. Email us. We are waiting to pray for you. Well, we've come to the end of this broadcast. So this is David McKivitt saying unto you, until we meet again, that no matter what the problem may be, Jesus is the answer. I hope you enjoyed this video brought to you by Full Gospel Evangelism. If you want to know more about David McKivitt and the work of the Full Gospel Evangelism, please write to Pastor David McKivitt, Full Gospel Evangelism, here of Emmanuel House of Worship, 89 Valentine Road, London, E17 3JJ, England. Telephone calls on 0203 289 1747. If you are outside the United Kingdom, it is 0044 3289 1747. You can text your prayer request to us on 0377 869 09. I'll take the number again 0777 0931 If you are outside the United Kingdom, it is 
0931. If you would like to email us on FGE123 at ncl.world.com or visit our website www.fge.org.uk